Hey guys, we're here in downtown Houston. Today we're talking about education and building stronger communities as usual. I want to first read you guys a quote that kind of talks a little bit about what we're doing here. Voluntaries seek instead to delegitimize the state through education and we advocate the withdrawal of the cooperation and tacit consent on which state power ultimately depends. So, the idea being that we can educate our communities, our brothers and sisters out here, wherever you live, I'm in Houston, on issues going around the world, on the crimes of the state, to empower them and help them realize that we don't need the state, and then we can then build, focus on building stronger communities. So in an effort to show that today, we're going to go around asking questions about the NDA, drones, and the presidential kill list from citizens here in downtown and get their take on that and find out just how educated we are and see if we can draw some, some conclusions to how strong communities can help build strong education and that the state cannot do that. Stay tuned. Hey guys, we are here with, what's your name? Tommy Lyles. Tommy, nice to meet you. So we're on the street, we're talking to people about certain issues going on in the world. I wanted to ask you if you were aware that according to a, a lawsuit this, this year, there are 63 known drone sites in, in America domestically and the FAA was ordered by Congress, uh, according to a Washington Times report, to clear the airspace for up to 20,000 drones over American skies um, in the next 10 years. Are we aware of this and how do you feel about it? Not aware at all. Um, if it's under the guise of national security, it's probably a good thing. It's, uh, I guess it depends on what information they're collecting and what they're doing with it. Definitely, okay. And um, yeah, I wanted, what I wanted to highlight is really not whether, you know, particularly if you think it's a positive thing or not, but the fact that this is a, is a huge, huge issue going on. It's becoming a bigger, bigger issue because of the things like you said, like what kind of information are they collecting and privacy um, issues and things like that. But there are a lot of people who are still unaware of these. And we see this as, for one, being a great example of how controlled the media is to some degree, that if there's issues that don't want to get talked about, like that the drone, the drone topic has not been discussed in any of the presidential debates, for example. Um, and one of the solutions that I try to highlight is creating stronger communities and, and the, the fact that if we have stronger communal ties, familial ties, we can keep each other educated about important things that affect us and, and hope to you know, and, uh, educate ourselves better. So do you feel here in Houston or you know, wherever you re currently reside, do you feel like you are part of a, a community? Uh, very much so part of a community, but um, thinking about your explanation, the one thing that I think is probably an even bigger thing you want to look at is we're given the opportunity to research and find out this information on our own. The fact that we would rely on the media to tell us that is a very scary thing. I think it's incumbent on each and every one of us to, if it's something that the FAA is leading, then that's public information. We should be able to go and, and access that and do our own research and, and follow up in that manner as opposed to wait for someone to tell us what they think or what their perception of this. 100% agree with you, and that's exactly why we're out here trying to do this and become the new media because so many people have become dependent on the corporate media that we know. I'd like to give you a copy of this story for yourself, and thank you for your time. Thank you. Hope that works for you. Yeah, All right. perfect, hey guys, we are here downtown in Houston. We are here with, what's your name? My name is Connor Lodge. Connor Lodge. Awesome. Thank you for talking with us. So. We are doing a little experiment. We're asking to see how much our community out here in Houston knows. Um, first question I wanted to ask is, do you know who President Obama is? Yes, I do. I know him as the U.S. President. Okay, so, so you're aware of that. Now, I wanted to ask you if you have ever heard of the National Defense Authorization Act or the NDAA. Have you heard of, the, of that bill? It, it passed earlier this year. Yes, I heard about that bill, but actually I've not really like just studied it. I know the extent of it, but I... I mean, I've heard about it, and, uh, and uh, yeah, yeah. Have you heard about um, the provision within, within the bill that allows for indefinite detention of American citizens without trial by jury? If they believe that you're a terrorist, you basically lose your right to trial by jury, and um, this, was, this is part of the NDA this year. Did you know that that was in the bill? As a matter of fact, I did, have, I, I've, I, I did not read it in between the lines to really, to really like understand it, yeah. read properly, but... Um, but you heard it. You said you heard of it. You just didn't know that. Yes, exactly. Okay. Well, see, and this and this is kind of what we're out here trying to do. Basically, what we're trying to show people is, for one, I don't know where you get your news from, but the American media that we know is controlled by a handful of corporations and is largely owned. You know, by only by a handful of people, they control everything that you see on TV, everything you read in magazines. And so, what we're trying to offer as a solution to this is stronger communities, that if we build stronger communities, we can help keep each other educated, keep our brothers and sisters aware of things that are going on in the world that affect us. 
do you feel uh, wherever you live in Houston do you feel that you're a part of a strong community oh yeah where I live actually is a very good neighborhood uh, I never have any problem and I've been living there for so many years uh, we look out for like each other and um, as a matter of fact the place I live I mean it's good and and it's well protected and people look out for each other in, in case if I'm not there and you're my neighbor and then if I see any strange person that's going to your house I would like hey you know so so you feel in your community you know that everybody looks out for each other and you help out whenever you need to and you help on camp. exactly exactly what do you what are the, what do you think is are the keys to having a, a strong community like what can other people what should other people try to do if they're trying to build strong families and strong communities well, they really have to like just to look out for like each other make sure they keep eyes on I mean on each other's back you know I mean you know so I mean it's the only way we can just look out for each other make sure you're really looking for each other if you're home or maybe by phone or by by any, by any kind of way so yeah, just help out however you can help each other then if, then if you see any person then you call 911 you know and, and then do you do you think do you think it's important for us to to keep each other educated within the community so we know what's happening in the world do you find importance in that yeah of course education is the key to everything you know so you must have to know your area and your surroundings and your neighbors i mean i mean it's the only way you can build a very strong strong uh, uh that's a community you know Oh, I want to offer. I wanted to give you uh, the copy of this story here so that you can learn more about what I was talking about—the bill, okay. the, the NDA. I'll and thank you very much for your time. Hey guys, we're still downtown, and we're speaking with what's your name, sir? Mark Thomas. Mark Thomas. So we're asking people on the street, you know, how how aware they are of certain stories. You know, some of the top stories that happened this year. Um, I would like to ask you if you were aware of the so-called presidential kill list. It was written about. Uh, and on May 29th by the New York Times, was the first person, first uh, publication to report about this. Apparently, the president and any president now in the future has a what you know what is termed a kill list, a list of terrorist targets where he makes the final decision on you know what what the action is taken on them. Were you aware of this? Um, in general, yes, but not in any specific detail. I've heard it talked about before, but I haven't read any uh, great detail on it. Was on. Um, and this is. Obviously, it's a New York Times article. We've got two, two uh, New York Times stories here, and it was also written about in Forbes and other well-known publications. Yet, this is also another example of something that's not being talked about in the presidential debates. And we're here to highlight certain issues that the media fails to, uh, to report on. And you know, we're out here trying to become the new media and encourage people within the community to seek out information themselves instead of relying on other people. And for me, what that points towards is building stronger communal ties where we have stronger relationships with our family and our friends where we can educate each other on important issues and as as a citizen of Houston do you feel that you belong to a community out here do you feel there's a sense of community within the city um, I do in my community uh, yeah, certainly with uh, families we have small children that uh, we you know, interact with other families so yes I do feel a sense of community and what what do you think is I guess the secret or you know one of one of the uh, an example of a positive community, you know, that we, we could work towards? Um, I think it would be people that uh, take an interest at the local level in politics, uh, that, you know, take an effort to vote and get involved in um, seeing the decisions that the political leaders here make that actually impact them at the local level. Um, you know, voting does have an influence on that, but a lot of people fail to take advantage. Definitely, I would agree with you on focusing local, building stronger communal ties, and really whatever the issue may be, what I, what I think we try to work towards is finding common ground amongst uh, you know, the most amount of individuals we can, whether you, know, you consider yourself to be coming from the right or the left or associated with neither political party, but trying to find common ground issues that we can strengthen, us, especially on a local level. So thank you for your time. Thank you. So everybody we talked to, they didn't seem to really know about drones or the NDA or the presidential kill list beyond maybe hearing a little bit about it but not looking into it too much themselves. They also seemed to agree that the media was controlled and each of them felt that they were a part of some community, you know, of their own community. Maybe not the same community that I'm speaking of, but it, it's still important for us to be a part of a community. Now if we can take those communities and expand and work on education, 
work on counter economics, work on everything that you know is going on inside of us and really start to push the philosophical, intellectual, spiritual evolution that's taking place, push it to the next level, I think we're gonna we're gonna see things happen at a smoother rate. So basically the takeaway from today is that communities are the answer once again. You know, if we want to keep ourselves educated, we have to become the new media. We can't rely on anyone, including me, to bring you the information. Look into stuff for yourself and also encourage those around you to do the same. Once we have communities that are educated and empowered, there's no way that we can be fooled and we're going to take the power back.